How long, Mrs Bridges? Till it's done and not before. Well, when's that, then? When your arm drops off. Look, I'm supposed to be a footman, not an ice cream maker. This is kitchen maid's work, this is. Ruby couldn't turn the handle of a musical box, let alone a thing like that. I said pick them over, Ruby, not eat them. Blinking organ grinder, that's me. All I need is a monkey on this. <laughs> Watch it. Should I wash? Wash strawberries? A very idea. Take away any little flavour they have got. Now, when I was a girl, strawberries did have flavour. Now, so much cotton wool wadding. Oh! I'm sick and tired of not cooking. Something cold, Mrs. Bridges, she says. <laughs> How I long to get me hands on a nice leg of mutton. Oh, you don't want gas going this weather, Mrs. Bridges. We've got a shopping cake. Well, don't want that thing going anyway. What are we having tonight, Mrs. Bridges? Salmon. Same as them. Oh, no, not again. I don't like it. Then you'll go hungry. <laughs> if I leave this in the larder another day, it'll walk off on its own two feet. Are we off for ice, Mrs. Bridges? Oh, it's in the sink, Mr. Hudson, what's left of it. Thank you. Oh. oh, Edward, go and remove one place in the dining room. There'll only be two for dinner tonight. Oh, rat! The master will be dining out, Mrs. Bridges, oh. at his club. Jeff Chatham. Yes? Right, no, I'm sorry, but it's Dick Cumb. Yes, Bellamy. Dick Bellamy. Well, it is you. That's hard to believe. Well, I didn't even know you were a member here. <laughs> Only just. Uh, I live in the country and I hardly ever come in here. Well, that's an old wind. It's been donkey's years. Well, since Paris, when you were grand second secretary and I was humble fourth. Yes, united in our loathing of the first secretary. <laughs> Not to mention the ambassador. <laughs> oh, uh, bunting, <laughs> I'll, I'll have some more. Uh, will you have some whiskey? Uh, yes, please. Uh, I can't stay long. I've got to catch a train. Well, sit down for five minutes. Uh, are you still with the Foreign Office? No, I married into commerce. I loved the girl and needed the money. I prefer it now. I was, uh, I was sorry to read about your wife. Thank you. I say, this place, it's like a morgue. Yes. Well, London's always tedious this time of the year. The house in recess, everyone away. Well, you should get away yourself. Nowhere to go. Oh, no country seat? No, oh, no, heavens no. Only our London house now, and that belongs to my son. I just board there. Yeah. Thank you. So, just a oh, little, just a little, please. Do you ever get down to Southwell these days? Never. Marjorie's cousin is not... Oh, oh, I've oh, 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 I've oh, got a cloth. It, it's a new me. siphon. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's all right. No, there's no harm done. I'm very sorry, sir. It won't stay. No, no, it'll probably spoil the crease. Yes. Nothing more. <laughs> Look, just give me a little soda in the glass, please. And carefully now. That's right, that's enough. <laughs> it uh, doesn't show. No, 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 no. Ah, where were we? Oh, yes, about your situation. Yes. Well, it's really none of my business. Well, I'm now one of those impoverished widowers with a small income and precious little capital. Oh, I see. It's rotten for you. Tell me, Dick, do you, um... Do you ever gamble on the stock exchange? Shares? Consoles? Oh, never. All a mystery to me. Mm. Yes, well... I must be getting to the station. Well, well can't you dine and uh, go later? I'm on my own now. Uh, alas, no. My uh, my chairman is coming for the weekend, and as he also happens to be my father-in-law, I must be getting back. Well, it's been good to see you. Again. We'll meet the next time I'm in London. We must. Yes. Goodbye. Goodbye. Dick, uh, it's just a thought. Uh, yes. Uh, what's that? I'd like to give you a tip, uh, if I may. Well, thank you, Jack, but I never back horses. No, this isn't a horse. Any spare cash that you do have, anything you can raise, 
by Cartwright's Engineering. That a motor car firm might just ease your situation. Well, that's very kind of you, but surely all motor car firms are as dead as the dodo. Even I know that. Too much competition for too small a market, isn't that what they say? <laughs> sorry, Jack. You will be sorry if you don't. Do you mean that? I promise you. But there is one thing that you must promise me. For reasons which I can't disclose, you must not mention to anyone that I told you to buy them. Let's be absolutely confidential. Word of honor. I must be going. Well, uh, look, Jack, uh, let, me, let me have your address. I... Cartwright Engineering. Aye, that's right, Jock. Apple cider for the 230 and a bob to win white magic for the St. Ledger. Hello? Ah, there you are, Hudson. The telephone was busy. Oh, I, I'm sorry, sir. I, w I was just making some arrangements with a, a tradesman. Uh, uh, yes, yes, well, that's quite all right. Uh, I want you to get me a telephone number, Chancery 2214. Very good, sir. Hello? Number, please. Oh, uh, would you connect me, please, with Chancery 2214? Hello? Good morning, Mr. Oh, uh, come on in. Is that Berenger said lawn man? Uh, uh, can I speak to Mr. Main, please? You have a light, please. Yeah, yes, I will. Hello, my dear. I'm sorry. James wanted some cigarettes. We thought you might have some. Uh, yes. Here we are. Thank you. Did you have a pleasant evening at your club? Oh, tolerable. I met a chap I hadn't seen for years, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh hello. Is, is that Mr. Main? Speaking. This is Richard Bellamy here. I believe you looked after my late wife's investments. Oh, yes, Lady Marjorie. Yes. How nice it's each <laughs> Thank you. I, I wonder if you'll do something for me. Glad to help if we can. I'd like you to purchase from my account some Cartwright Engineering shares, the, the motor car firm. Cartwrights? They're a bit slack at the moment. Yes, yes, Mr. Bain, I know they are, but all the same, I I'm would like... Are certain about this? Oh, yes, yes, I'm quite certain. Five thousand pounds worth. Uh, ordinary shares. Well, yeah. Well, I suppose so. Um, what do I have to do? Oh, nothing further. We'll send you an account. All right. Thank, thank you very much. You have no doubts about this. No, no, I have no doubts, Mr. Main. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. Goodbye, Mr. Main. Well, perhaps they make me rich. Perhaps they won't. It's an awful lot of money to risk. Yes. It's calculated. Well, thank you for the cigarettes, Richard. Just as well as locks. Uh, thank you, sir. Though might I suggest a new one? Oh, certainly not. One only buys a new hat for a general election, not the first day of a new session. Will you be requiring your coat today, sir? It is cooler this morning, Richard. No, no, no. Plenty of time for coats and collars. Thank you, Hudson. Thank you. Now, my dear, can you spare me a couple of minutes in the study? Yes. Just some bills for you and James. Now, that's the curl merchants. And that's bills from Wilson's, the garage. That's where James's motor car is sent to be by mistake. I'll see to them. Three little maids on wheel. Oh. You're very cheerful this morning, Richard. Well, it's getting back to the House of Commons after that interminable summer recess. Give Mr. Asquith a bite for me, would you? I'll do that. And I'm going to my tailor to order a new suit. Splendid. Oh, Father. Uh, didn't, you, didn't you say you bought some of those cart car engineering? Your motor. Hmm? Oof. Mm. You say you bought some of those Cartwright Engineering, the, uh, the shares? Yes, in a moment of aberration. I should have listened to that stockbroker. Why? Oh, something about them in the paper this morning. Oh, well, they went up a halfpenny a month ago. I suppose they've lost it again. Well, not exactly. What did you buy them at? Three and sixpence. It's engraved on my heart. 
Today they're 14 shillings. What? Richard! Well, that's, that's incredible. Let well, me uh, well, see. Well, 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 how much am I worth? Come on, you're uh, the mathematician. 5,000 pounds. Well, your 5,000 is now worth 20. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, jolly good. Well, why have they got it? There must be a reason for it. Well, there is. They've just pulled off a whopping great deal with the war office to make trucks for the army. What made you buy them, eh? Someone put you onto them? Uh, yes, yes, uh, an old friend, yes. Congratulations. Oh, darling, you should be off. So oh, must I. Yes. Well, that's incredible. 15,000 pounds profit in a matter of weeks merely by picking up the telephone. Yes, well, don't go and spend it, Father. Remember, it's only on paper, unless, of course, you sell the shares again. No, I won't do that. Come on. I'm doing the tailors at Goodbye, seven. Richard. Oh. Bye, Hazel. Be good. Bye, James. Goodbye, sir. Master gone, then? Uh, both of them, Mrs. Bridges, the old and the new. And both in a fairly cheerful mood for a change. Mm, well, that's just as well. The tradesman's books higher than ever. I know what it'll be. We must cut back, Mrs. Mrs. Bridges. Must economise. No, I don't think we're as hard up as all that, Mrs. Bridges. Gentry's always hard up when it comes to paying bills. Especially them as wasn't born to it. Mentioning no names, but uh, you see where my thoughts fly. Even the master's not exactly hard up. Not today, Mrs. Bridges. Oh, what's he been up to, then? Pawning the crown jewels? <laughs> <laughs> what are you so full of cream for? He's had good news, Mrs. Bridges. Although, naturally, I can't say what. Yes, you can, and yes, you will. The girl. She can't hear. Even if she could, she wouldn't be able to understand. <laughs> News. It's some shares he's got. They've gone right up in the stock exchange. Mm, I don't hold with shares. Penny bank, yes. What shares? It seems he's made a wise investment that could make him financially independent at last. Oh. At about time, too, Mrs. Bridges. Oh. Morning. Good morning. Ah, Bellamy. Bridges. Good morning. Just the fellow. Good summer? Tolerable, thank you. Have you got your extra sheet? No, something interesting. Do you know Arthur Knowles? No, I don't think so. A lobby correspondent of the Evening Gazette. Not quite my politics, and even as yours, but still, <laughs> Arthur Norris, Richard Bellamy. How do you do, Mr. Norris? It's an honour to make your acquaintance, sir. Norris was asking me about this Cartwright business. Oh, you have heard. Yes, they've got a contract to re-equip the army with motor trucks. Why ask Pritchett? He's not war office, just a backbencher like myself. Uh, government benches, of course. <laughs> uh, you need uh, Mayfield or Deeping. I'll see if they're around. I don't go to any trouble. I beg Mr. Pritchett has been most helpful. I thought perhaps he should have a word with you. I believe you know something about it. I. Ah, uh, Bertie. Forgive me, gentlemen. It's these um, motor trucks that I'm curious about. Oh, yes. It's the one the army favours so much. They spend a fortune on it. Uh, Cartwright engineers have been working on the machine for years. Uh, with encouragement, I believe? I don't think I can help them. It's an interesting question that Mr. Pritchett's put down for tomorrow. Don't you agree? I get the impression you're trying to say something. Oh, no, no. Not me. It's your friend, Mr. Pritchett's question. He's not my friend. And what's his question, anyway? <clears throat> Mr. Henry Pritchett, the member for Stutworth North, to ask the Prime Minister if he will set up an inquiry to investigate the circumstances in which allegations have been made that certain honourable members have made use of information improperly acquired when dealing in the shares of Cartwright Engineering Limited. That's somewhat sensational. Don't you agree, Mr Bellamy? No tea late, Mrs. Bridges. I haven't had time. That ruby's out. There's a pot on the range if you're dying of thirst. Where have you been, girl? To shop in Elizabeth Street oh. to fetch Mr. Hudson's evening papers. Shop? I think you've been to the printers and printed it. Oh, thank you, Ruby. Thank you. 
You've been talking to soldiers? Oh, no, Mrs. Bridges, I wouldn't dare. I shouldn't think they'd want to, neither. Well, go on, get the tea laid up. She's listless, that Ruby. Dose of brimstone and treacle for her tonight. A first-class team for Saturday. My own choice, exactly. Oh? What's that, then, Mr. Hudson? Uh, Chelsea, for the game against Woolwich Arsenal. God bless my soul. That's Mr. Bellamy's picture, look. Among the names figuring in the share register of Cartwright Engineering is that of Mr. Richard Bellamy, MP. Ooh. It will be remembered that Mr. Bellamy's wife, the Lady Marjorie, was among the victims of the tragically oh. ill thing. Why can't they let it alone? She's dead, and that's that. Question in the house tomorrow about the master's shares, eh? I don't like the sound of this, Mrs. Bridges. Hazel. Back to my old job as your secretary. Yes. I didn't expect you so early. How was the house? Oh, it was fun to be back in harness. Oh, do you want some tea? No, thank you. I must telephone the stockbroker before he leaves his office. Your valuable shares? Yes. Well, I might as well get rid of them while they're high. But would I be a bull or a bear? I never know. A bull, I think. Oh. Suppose they go even higher. Well, I rather hope they don't. Spoken like a socialist. Why? Oh, Richard. Oh. Some idiots put down a damn full question about them. Oh? Had me worried for a moment, but it's nonsense. Still, I might as well get rid of them and be done with it. Excuse me, sir. I, I thought perhaps you ought to see the evening newspaper. Evening newspapers? But early, isn't it? It's my own copy, sir. Oh, well, that's very kind of you, Hudson. Oh, thank you, Hudson. Oh, oh, Hudson, would you get me a telephone number? Chancery 2214. Very good, sir. Every man, he must think I'm very out of date with the news. Oh, Richard. What? God Almighty. Your number, sir. Uh, cancel it, please, Hudson. Very good, sir. Our friend Pritchard seems to be out for my blood. In God's name, why? Jeffrey. Where is your master? I'll see if he's at home, sir. Which means that he is. He's in the study, sir. Ah, <clears throat> uh, Jeffrey. Sir, Jeffrey Dillon, sir. What is this, Richard? Oh, you've seen it. I have. Are you trying to drag the Southold name in the mud? I imagine you would come here through concern for me and not for the Talbot carers. Excuse me, Richard. Sir Jeffrey. Have you thought of the Dowager Countess? She's bound to hear of it. Some friend will telephone, you may be sure. How could you do this, Richard? I would have thought a solicitor above all would assume his client's innocence until the reverse is proved. I would have bought the damn paper to read about that disgraceful divorce suit F.E. Smith's conducting. For us, as a matter of fact. Well? I'll sue the rag for libel and you'll make a lot of money. You can't sue them. It's not libelous. Have MPs been trafficking in Cartwright shares? It's a question. Richard Bellamy, MP, is found to have bought shares in the company recently. It's a plain statement of fact. I assume it is a statement of fact? Well, of course it is. How many? Five thousand pounds worth. What, the five thousand? The money you got from James for the house? I have no other. Then you're a fool. A fool, even though they're now worth twenty thousand? I can manage simple arithmetic. Where did you buy them? Oh, middle of last month. I was about to dispose of them. Don't you dare. Why not? It would look suspicious. Suspicious? For God's sake. To sell out the moment you're in trouble, as good as admitting your guilt. I am not in trouble, and I am not guilty. What exactly is this question tomorrow? How is it phrased? Henry Pritchett. And asking the Prime Minister? I know. Why didn't he put it down for the War Secretary? Wouldn't have made as big a splash in the papers. Is Asquithin on this? Surely not. And they're both liberals. I wouldn't put anything past them. Mr. Johnson Munby to see you, sir. Johnson Munby? 
Oh, send him in, Hudson. I thought we should have your chief whip round here before you could say the word scandal. Damn it, the question doesn't mention me by name. The newspaper does, Richard. I'm afraid the fat's in the fire. Mr. Johnson Monday, sir. Good afternoon. Ah, oh, Sir Geoffrey. Good afternoon. I expect you can guess why I'm here. Oh, yes, yes, I can. Oh, please sit down. Thank you. Now, Monday, before we go any further, I'd like to make it quite clear to you. My dear Bellamy, it... you have purchased shares in a firm, possibly knowing, I will allow you, possibly, that the firm in question would benefit from a government contract. That was a very dangerous thing to do. Did you know, Richard? I did not. Then why did you buy the stock? Because someone advised me to. Someone outside the house? Was it, Richard? It might make a difference. The man who advised me to has nothing to do with politics. Your broker? Certainly not. I cannot reveal his name because I promise not to on my word of honour. The honour of the Conservative Party is at stake, Bellamy, and of the House of Commons. The honour of the House? Have they gone mad? If that's your attitude... That is my attitude and my firm belief. Let Pritchard ask his question and be damned. You're skating on very thin ice, Richard. Don't you realise that? Good morning. I would like you to arrange a meeting for both of us with the leader, if you would. I wouldn't advise it. The morning's newspapers make unpleasant reading. Yes, they say much to offend, while offering nothing in the way of fact. Any further developments? Yes, one. Through his chief whip, the Prime Minister has done us the courtesy of showing us his reply to Pritchett's question. Which is? He knows nothing of dealings by honourable members in the shares of Cartwright Engineering Limited, or whether any misuse of privileged information may be involved. But he wishes to inform the honourable member for Stutworth North that he proposes to appoint a select committee to look into the matter. A select committee? He set one up in 93 in similar circumstances, when he was Home Secretary, the Featherstone affair. It worked very well. It will be my duty to instruct you to appear before the committee to answer their questions. Why not a full-scale trial at the Old Bailey? A three-man select committee will be simpler and quicker, and it can take evidence under oath. Under oath? I'm not a liar, you know. Nobody said you were. Now, I advise you to go home, Bellamy. I wouldn't show your face in the chamber, not today, unless you relish the prospect of a pack of wolves baying for your blood. Uh, no, she's not, Mrs. Bridget. That's right, she's going to visit her ma, I've heard her say so. Edward, what on earth are you doing with those flowers? Well, she likes the way I do them. She said so. Oh, make a nice little wife for somebody you would. More than you would. Oh, chop and change, chop and change. The pavement outside is thick with people. Gawkers? Yes, gawkers and newspaper men, Mrs. Bridges. Mrs. Bellamy's quite right not to run their gauntlet. Well, it'll just have to be the raised pie I made. There's no choice. She wants a share of you. They're only there because his name's in the paper. You know, she should have let me call the police. Well, I should have thought they would have come before. Him, a member of Parliament and that rabble outside. <laughs> they won't throw a bomb, will they? Get on with your work, Ruby. <sighs> Good God. Will they, Mr. Hudson? I think it's extremely unlikely, Mrs. Bridges. Only villains get into papers. The master is hardly a villain, Mrs. Bridges. The king gets in papers. That's as maybe. You get on with your work, my girl. That potato's got eyes in it. I can see them from here staring at me. Just like that crowd outside staring in here. We're notorious, that's what we are. Now keep calm, Mrs. Bridges. How can anybody keep calm? Oh, 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 crap. <laughs> it's like one of them, their sieges. With the enemy all round. We'll starve to death. Oh, be quiet, girl. I won't tell you again. Don't you 
pick up my ruby. Oh, it's, uh, it's all right, Hudson. I came in through the mules. Yes, yes, of course, sir, but... Uh, Rather crowded by the front door. Yes, the gentleman of the press, sir. So I gather. Things must be bad for him to come in by his own back door. So, it's tomorrow. What is? Your grilling by the select committee. Yes. Well, I suppose I must wish you luck. But I don't understand you. Don't you? No, I don't. Sir Geoffrey Dillon, sir. Yeah. Good evening, Sir Geoffrey. Dillon? Uh, do you want me to go? No, we have no secrets from each other. Who was concerned of? Uh, thank you, I haven't time. Well, do sit down. I have a city dinner tonight. Worshipful company of master cutlers. Oh, yes. They're the fellows that make the sharp knives for politicians to stab each other in the back. If you're thinking of our friend Pritchett, I'm not altogether satisfied. How do you mean? His motive, Richard. Damn it, the indiscretion of one Tory member. Can't bring down a Liberal government and you can't bring down an opposition, so what's his game? Pure mischief-making, by the sound of it. I wonder where his interests lie. Just keep an eye on friend Pritchett. You've seen this, I take it? The names of my judges, yes. Not your judges, Richard, your examiners. This isn't a trial, you know. Isn't it? With the Attorney General leading the team? Uh, who is Reuben Chantry? Liberal. Oh. And this man, Devnish, the Tory? Oh, he's Vic Brewer from the North. Bone idle, harmless and stupid. One of each and a criminal lawyer in the middle. Now look here, Richard, for the last time, because there is no more time. Who was this man you claim advised you to buy those shares? Are you going to disclose his name? For the last time, Geoffrey, I am not. The advice was given to me in the utmost confidence. And it remains a fact that it never occurred to you to ask this man the source of his information. But that is correct. And that's what you're going to tell the committee tomorrow? Yes. Oh, Father, why do you have to be so pig-headed? Because I happen to believe, James, that a gentleman should keep his word. And I trust you agree with that. The real reason why I called in this evening is to tell you that I've taken the liberty of seeing the speaker on your behalf. What good is that going to do me? Wasn't that rather my business than yours? Not altogether. Things are going to be said tomorrow and questions asked which may reflect upon your honour and integrity. I feel it my duty as legal adviser to the family to hold a watching brief upon the proceedings. To this end, I've obtained the Speaker's permission and that of the Attorney General to be present myself. Fortunately, Sir William Trevanion and I read law together at New College, Oxford. Is that in my favour? Quite the contrary. We detest each other. Then why come? I am concerned, Richard, with the reputation of the Southwold name. As far as yours is concerned, if you wish to withhold the one piece of evidence that might save your skin, by all means do so. Wreck your political career, if that's what you want, and disgrace your family by implication. The evidence I shall give this committee will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help me God. Uh, you understand, Mr. Bellamy, that the oath you have just taken binds you throughout this inquiry? Well, of course I understand. I would advise you not to be pettish with the court, sir. Court, Sir William? Committee, surely. Thank you, Sir Geoffrey. Thank you. Now, in permitting the accused a legal... Accused, uh, Sir William. I do beg your pardon, Sir Geoffrey. I remember you were always a hair splitter. What would you have? Now, gentlemen, please, it was my understanding that we're here to inquire and make a report for the House. For that, we need facts, and I'm not sure that too much procedure matters. Procedure always matters, Mr Chantry. Without it, we have anarchy. And no justice is born of anarchy. Let's get on with it, eh? Well, surely that is our intention. Now, you've read the affidavit from Robert Maine of Beringer, Sidlaw and Maine relating to the purchase of the shares. Are there any questions arising from that? Uh, when you saw the sharp rise of the shares due to press reports of the contract, you didn't think it prudent to sell the shares? 
in the circumstances, I saw no reason to. Are you in the habit of speculating on the stock exchange, Mr. Bellamy? Up until I bought the Cartwright shares, I had never bought or sold a share in my life. Mm. Uh, when these shares you purchased went up in price, perhaps you'll allow me to use the word sensationally, because it was announced that the company had signed a contract to supply the army with a new motor vehicle known as the Bulldog. Were you surprised? I was. The negotiations leading up to this contract were, I understand, conducted over a number of years in the strictest secrecy. One of the reasons, I believe, was commercial rivalry. Another company known as Rankin Mechanicals, having also submitted designs to the War Office. Now, Mr. Bellamy, if, despite that secrecy, you had learned of this new vehicle and the high hopes pinned upon its successful developments, then surely you must have known that you'd be guilty by investing <coughs> in the company. Uh, Mr. Chantry, Mr. Chantry, you exercise Sir Geoffrey. Mr. Bellamy is not on trial. No. I Nevertheless, would... it is possible the criminal proceedings could ensue from this committee's work. And in certain circumstances, the report might have to be sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions. I have no objection to anything Mr. Chantry has said. If I had known of this contract before I bought the shares, I would indeed be guilty of using privileged information for personal gain. There's no question of that. Thank you, Mr. Bellamy. So we may take it you did not know. I did not. No. I'm a backbencher in opposition, not party to war office secrets. Mr. Chantry, would it not be at all if I... Oh, yes, indeed, now I think is the time, yes. <sighs> yes, Mr. Bellamy, uh, we have, through the courtesy of the Central Registrar, uh, access to certain documents which are not normally available. Uh, We've had no sight of any such documents, Sir William. No, Sir Geoffrey, but you will hear of them. Now... I have in my hand here a minute of the proceedings of the Imperial Defence Committee for Friday, June the 27th, 1905. Uh, a well-attended meeting of that important body. And among the names of members present is listed that of Mr. Richard Bellamy, MP, who was at that time Under Secretary of State at the Admiralty in Mr. Balfour's government. I admit I was on the Imperial Defence Committee at that time. That was up until the change of government in 1905 when... Go uh. Thank you. Thank you. Now, on that day, June the 27th, 1905, there were two matters on the agenda. Reports on the manoeuvres of the German Grand Fleet... A matter of great concern to me, of course. And and a report on the development of a promising new truck for the army in its first stages of design by Cartwright Engineering Company Limited, to be known as the Bulldog. Now, from these minutes, it is perfectly clear that the further development of that vehicle was encouraged by, among others, Mr. Richard Bellamy. Would you care to comment on that? It was eight years ago. Can I possibly remember details of the Richard truck or the name of the manufacturers after all that time? How can you prove you couldn't? James, I can't. Surely, Richard, all you need to do is to tell them the name of the man at the club. I will not betray a confidence, Hazel. Not for a whole army of lawyers and politicians. If they choose to put a scurrilous and insulting interpretation of what I did in perfect innocence, then be damned to them. Yes. And allow the press and public to mention nothing of your friends and family to go on believing that you behaved in a dishonourable manner. I did nothing of the sort. Then prove it, Paul. It's not up to me to prove anything. The burden of proof is on them. Father, you are guilty by implication. Yes, I am not guilty. Will you please stop making these accusations? You're as bad as they are. James, please. Well, Richard has been through a lot today. And more to come tomorrow. Yes. And whose fault is that? Will they put him in prison, you think? I don't think. I damn think. Where's that girl? Ruby. She's in the scullery. Fetch her, Edward. What do you want her for? Oh, she's going up in the world. She has correspondence. Ruby? Mrs. Bridges, please. A letter is private, even to a kitchen maid. I have the right. If it's from some man, I'll give her one she won't forget. 
you want to be, Mr. Hudson? You've uh, had a letter, Ruby. Oh, no, not me. Yes, here is the envelope. Miss Ruby Finch, care of 165 Eaton Place. <laughs> the idea. Ruby Finch? <laughs> That's my name. A man, Mrs. Bridges? Oh, no, I never, I swear it's a lie. I Words. It's from Bradford, from your mother. There you go. You'll read it for me, Mrs. Bridges, would you? Well, it would take me all day, and I've, I've got pots to scour. Is she all right? It's not her leg, is it? It's not Miss Sister Ethel. Dear Ruby, you're to come home at once. Your dad and me don't want you serving in no house what gets in the papers. Second, we do not want you working for someone who, like as not, will soon be in prison, your dad sure of it. Third, I've got you a place as kitchen maid with Dr. Reardon round the corner. It's live in and all found so you won't be under my feet. Enclose money for train. P.S. Spot died, run over by the brewer's dray. Your dad and Ethel send their love, mother. Will you tell the committee how you first came by the knowledge that Richard Bellamy's name was on the register of shareholders at Cartwright's? I went to the company's office and looked up the share register. Did you find the names of any other members of Parliament on the register? Anyone at all whose holding of shares might have discomfited you? I did not. So there was no great Tory plot. I doubt whether even you would consider Mr Richard Bellamy's holding shares on his own a Tory plot. So one begins to wonder why you made the expedition to the company's offices in the first place. I am interested in the good name of this house and rectitude in public life. Address the committee, if you please. I am vigilant against corruption on behalf of my constituents. Ah, yes, your constituents in uh, Stutworth North, I believe. Yes, that is my constituency. Now, up till 1904, Mr. Pritchett, you were, I believe, a shareholder in a company called Rankin Mechanicals. I did have a few shares. Well, what of it? Were not Rankin Mechanicals the only possible competition for that war office contract? Rankin Mechanicals, whose factory is in Stutworth North, your constituency? Look, I don't know what you're implying. The committee, if you please. I told her, madam, she can't go. I mean, I can't find another kitchen made at two minutes' notice. And anyway, it's downright disloyal. All right, Mrs. Bridges. Ruby, we cannot go against your mother's wishes. I don't want to go. I like it here, madam. Oh, there, there. there, there, there Perhaps there, you can take it downstairs, Mrs. Bridges. Yes, 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 madam. I will write to your mother, Ruby, and see if I can persuade her to change her mind. That is all I can do. Thank you, madam. Now, come on, Ruby. Blow your nose. Come along with me. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Bridges. It seems as if Ruby's family have been poisoned by what they read in the newspapers. Uh, yes, madam. As working class people, they can hardly be expected not to know any better. It would be a pity if she left. Well, we'll just have to see. Thank you, Hudson. Hudson? Madam? I want to ask you a kindness. Anything I can do, madam? Please keep this to yourself, Hudson. The night before, Mr. Bellamy telephoned his stockbroker about these wretched shares. I do recall, madam. Do you? Do you remember the date? Because, you see, Mr. Bellamy dined at his club that night. And someone he met there, one of the members, advised him to buy those shares. Yes, madam. Well, I won't go into all the details, Hudson. For various reasons, Mr. Bellamy cannot himself 
reveal the man's name to the committee of inquiry. And I'm... That is, I'm Captain James. We must find out, you see. So that Mr. Bellamy will be cleared of all this suspicion. You will be hoping to persuade the gentleman to come forward. Exactly. I cannot myself go into a man's club and ask the hall porter the name of any of the members who might have spoken to Mr. Bellamy on the night of... Well, whatever it was. It was the night of September the 9th, madam. Really? I have reason to remember because the following day was the 10th, St. Ledger Day at Doncaster. Are you sure? Positive. If I might take the afternoon off, madam. Certainly, Hudson. I put it to the honourable member for Stutworth North that Rankins found out that Richard Bellamy was a shareholder in Cartwrights, their successful rivals, that Rankins pressured him, how, I don't know, and heaven forfend that I should find out, to start this calumny, not to destroy Richard Bellamy, a mere victim standing in the way, but to negate Cartwright's contract by painting a picture of corruption so that the War Office and the Treasury would be forced to cancel the contract. I agree. The contract should be cancelled. The whole thing should be re-examined. And go to Rankin's next time. Well, that, if I may say so, would be disastrous to give the contract to another firm when Cartwrights have already developed a vehicle, a truck which can serve as a troop carrier, uh, supply vehicle, ambulance, even, even light artillery. It seems you do remember the details, Mr. Bellamy. And with enviable clarity. Uh, Mr. Challen. Country member. It doesn't come in much. Uh, would that have been the night before the St. Ledger, September the 9th? Yes, I reckon it was. Can you be sure? Quite sure. You see, this siphon of soda squirted all over Mr. Challen. And when I took the siphon back to Jack in the dispense and told him as Mr. Challen had wet his trousers, <laughs> he laughed and he said it must be a good omen because he was back in horse called April Showers at Doncaster the next day. <laughs> uh, could you uh, tell me this Mr. Challen's address? Oh, no, I can't do that. Against the rules to give members addresses to strangers. Sorry, it's uh, more than my job's worth. But you, uh, you must have a member's address book. In the old porter's cabiole. Wait here. That I knew something of the War Office hopes for Bulldog, I have no wish to deny. And I was not deceiving the committee in saying otherwise. It had simply gone out of my mind. I admit that in July of this year, I was the possessor of the capital sum of 5,000 pounds. Without, to be frank, hopes of any more. While pondering over this, I came across an old friend I had not seen for many years whose name, because his advice was given to me in the strictest confidence, I am unable to disclose. Hmm. Well, were we to believe in this man's existence, which we must question, another question would have to be answered. How much did this individual know, and how did he know it? Then I can only be right to protect his name. Yes, I think you are. Though at what a cost. There seems nothing more to be said on either side, so we will adjourn and consider our report tomorrow. Sir Geoffrey. <coughs> I found out the name of the man at the club. Have you, by George? Yes. Are you sure? Well, I hope so. Where's Richard? Oh, he's in bed. He's very tired. Well, who was it? A man called Challon. Jack Challon. Where's the who's who? Over there. I want you to talk to you first. 
Before I telephone. No, 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 don't telephone. If you were going to come forward, you'd have done so by now. His address is Hill Green Hall, near Taunton. This should interest the committee. Now, you told us the other day that it never occurred to you to ask this man his reasons for advising you to buy the shares. That is right. You knew, and indeed you made it clear to the Chief Whip and to myself, that this was not a man involved in politics. Yes. Did you know if he was involved in business? I knew that he was a businessman. Now, I'm going to suggest to you that this man is a senior director of Cartwrights, that he is married to the daughter of the company's chairman, Mr. William Cartwright, and that his reason for demanding your discretion was that he knew of the contract with the War Office about to be signed by his firm and that he could be in breach of city ethics by tipping his company's shares at that time to anyone. What am I supposed to say to that? You are under oath to answer questions put to you here truthfully. And I shall ask you one more question, which you must answer truthfully. What is your question? Is the name of the man who advised you to buy those shares John Stuart Challen? Yes. And may God and Challen forgive me. no report, at least not one that will cause any scandal. I am declared innocent if foolish, and my lack of forethought is deplored. Deplored? How dare they? How dare they? They could have dared a great deal worse. How dare you? What? Going to my club. I didn't go to Sending your Sending my servant, involving my servant in my affairs. Someone had to. Clubs exist so that women and servants can't meddle. As a result, I've been forced to break my word. You make me a man whose word is worthless. I'd rather prison than that. Then you are a fool. Do you think I give a damn about your word of honor, hand on your heart, public school code? Such things matter to a man. They don't matter to a woman. Any woman. We fight for things that do matter, like our families. And you are my family, like it or not. Women should keep out of men's affairs. Keep out! Newspapers, servants leaving, and those that are here in turmoil... I don't care! It was wrong of you and Geoffrey Dillon to force Channel's name out into the open against his will. And possibly get him to serious trouble with his company. He should have come forward, but he didn't dare. The man's a coward. Oh, Richard. Please. Don't be angry just because you needed help. I'm angry because you behave so willfully and improperly. Clearly, your way is not yet our ways. I'm sorry about that. I frequently think that you and James are insane. Because we have standards? I have standards, and I obey them. You won't convince me I've done anything wrong. Our ways will have to become your ways. About that, there can be no argument. And I suggest you start working on it this very minute. Now, please leave my study. <laughs> 